why do I think this is good is the most important question a creator could ask themselves. It's the question that can unlock what it is that you're about aesthetically. It's the question that can help you figure out if you have a philosophy or framework that's um, organic or authentic to you. Uh, and it's the question that you can use to teach yourself any creative craft. In my other life, I am a graphic design teacher. Perhaps the thing that's most central to the way that I teach is the idea that I want the students to be able to teach themselves. A good question is though, what does that actually mean? Does that mean that I want them to Google how to do everything? Not necessarily. There's a lot of stuff that you need to figure out in order to have a point of view about something that can't be Googled. So to me, the way that you get to this point where you can teach yourself a creative discipline and have insights into it and a perspective on it is through this kind of constantly asking yourself, why is this thing good? But to do that, you have to do it at the level of art school teacher. You have to do it at a level that gives you some depth. And this might run counter to a lot of how people perhaps view art schools or art school teachers. You might think that the way that they critique stuff is based on some sort of uh, intellectual theory or understanding of history or a broad knowledge of the contemporary art scene or contemporary music scene, as the case may be. But that would really only be true for some people. And for probably a lot of people, it's a kind of half-assed concoction of those three things. Every teacher is going to be different. But the question is, how do you teach yourself? And how do you use asking a really simple question as a method for teaching yourself? The one thing that art school teachers tend to do really well is constantly be pushing to dig beneath the surface. So if you ask a student, why do you like this thing? And let's say it's graphic design. And they say, because it's minimal. And then you can point to the sign on the restroom and say, that's also minimal. Do you like that for the same reasons? The answer is going to be no. Or nine times out of 10, the answer is going to be no. Um, because minimal is like this shorthand. It describes what you're looking at or describes an association the person has, but it doesn't necessarily tell you why this thing that's minimal is good versus that thing that's minimal. If you're talking about a piece of music and you say, okay, why do I think this is good? Just scrolling through my Instagram today, there was a thing that um, popped up, somebody was making a beat or something, and it reminded me of a old mob deep beat. So if the question is, okay, well, why do I think this is good? And I go, oh, it reminds me of Old Mop Deep. Well, that opens up another line of questioning. Why does it reminding me of that necessarily make it good? And what is it that I like so much about Old Mop Deep that causes me to appreciate things that echo it, reference it, remind me of it? And then within that, there's a whole bunch of interesting questions. There's a question of nostalgia. Like what happened in my life when that came out that made it significant? There's the question of contrast at that moment. Like, okay, this stood out to me, regardless of the nostalgic factors. Why did this thing stand out to me at that time? Digging deeper into questions like that might then create a situation where you can start to ask yourself, about your priorities as an artist. If I realize that I have a deeper meaning attached to Mob Deep, that opens up this potential for having an aesthetic philosophy that comes out of my own experiences. And so then it could be like, okay, well, at the time there was this thing going on in music. There was this trend and this record bucked that trend. It bucked these expectations of what was considered heavy at the time. Whatever those answers are, and the thing is, there's not right answers. 
there's just a whole bunch of answers that are highly dependent on like an individual point of view. In pursuing this line of questioning, I might develop guideposts. Like maybe what I will realize is that it's not necessarily about the aesthetic of drum samples and soul samples that's important. It's the massive amount of contrast with my environment. Like perhaps that's a thing that I wholeheartedly embrace. Perhaps it's about the roots of the activity. And then that becomes a thing that I knowingly uh, take into my work. The other thing is maybe it doesn't answer big questions or maybe those big questions are irrelevant. And that what really matters is what I learn about the sonics of the thing through the analysis of it. For the last couple of weeks, I haven't really touched making music, but I've been really deeply listening to a lot of stuff that I like and really focused on the drums. A couple of weeks ago, it was old school or classic dubstep. It's got me really thinking about what's happening in these drums as they're repeated the relationship between quiet and loud, the relationship of noise to signal, and how different elements kind of feed into that. Now, it's obviously all really obvious stuff, but I don't know that I've ever done a, a deep dive in it where I'm sitting there just constantly going like, okay, what's happening here? Why is this working? For the longest time, I'd listen to that music and be focused on the rhythmic sensibility. Or I'd be thinking about the sonic attributes of the drums, you know, like how crazy or interesting or processed they sound. Or thinking about song structure. But over the past couple of weeks, I've been listening to it with the guise of understanding what drums are being used and how they're being used. And the qualities of them, or what makes something overbearing or leave the snare without that pop. And even stuff where the snare doesn't have that pop. And why is that working? For about a week now, I've been listening to the Crown Hit Ruin LP that came out on Discord in 1996. Uh, this is a record that I loved when it came out and I listened to it religiously. And I always knew that the drumming was good, but I'm not sure that I knew why it was good. I knew why I thought the guitars were good. I knew why I thought the bass was good. I knew why I thought the vocals were good and the songwriting, but I definitely didn't know why I thought the drums were good. And so I've just been playing this record constantly, zoning out on what's happening with it and like how does a certain kind of symbol create space and how does another type uh, become something more linear? And what's the, the deeper kind of um, sonic lesson there? Because one of the things that's interesting is that you're listening to drums with a drum set. There's a finite number of pieces and instruments and attributes. So it's ultimately about how they're played and how they're composed. But by asking like, why do I like this? Or why is this working? Then you start to go like, oh, okay, well, when you play a ride cymbal, it does this particular thing. Like sonically, it achieves a thing, or rhythmically, it achieves a thing, or spatially. And when you play a crash once versus on the beat the entire time, how that creates space versus chaos, or how it makes the whole experience louder. The lesson for someone like me that doesn't play, I don't even start songs with a traditional drum kit, nine times out of 10. I usually load in one drum at a time. Uh, and build up from there. So check it out, we got a big ugly turkey. Oh, a whole bunch of them. Let's see if we can catch them. It's kind of dope. Um, so two lessons that come out of that then is, one, when I'm trying to achieve a certain thing, I can just pull a crash and use it in a certain way. And now I have a theory about how it works. But then the other thing becomes, okay, what else can I do that does the same thing? What other kind of sound, or how can I manipulate a sound to get that effect? You know, can I hit a piece of sheet metal with a stick, sample that, and have that achieve the same thing? Or what can I do with that sample that I can understand now what's happening with a 
really good traditional drummer in rock music and how can I apply and reinterpret that? The biggest thing I would leave it with is that you can read theory all day and there's nothing wrong with reading theory, but that you can make your learning way more impactful and personal by trying to force yourself to teach yourself, even though you might not have the history or the vocabulary to fully describe it. You can analyze things through the language that you understand, and you can at least understand them on a level that makes sense today. And then next year, you might totally blow that open with an entirely new understanding.